Okay, good to greet you all today. And uh, we're here in Great Falls, Montana at the Great Falls Genealogy Society Library on the third floor of the public library. And our topic today is the Randy Majors site, Neat Geography Apps and Hacks Using Google Maps. I simply adore this site uh, because it's been so helpful to me in making some maps uh, so that I can become acquainted with my community that I grew up in until I was nearly age 14. So without further ado, I'm gonna show you today what the handout is. Most of all, uh, most of you have the handout. It's about four or five pages, I believe, but I will show that to you briefly on the share screen so that we can just see if we're all copacetic. Are you seeing that? Just raise your hand if you are. Okay, people are seeing that. So there's about five pages here of handouts. Uh, it covers most all of the presentation, but certainly not all the, the examples because that would have taken many large BYTEs, bytes, uh, and I could not do that. So I'm gonna stop the share on that. Um, and uh, I'm going to go actually then to the presentation and hopefully that comes up. If you're seeing that, please, on the first page. Uh, um, but is it the first page? Randy Major's neat thing. I'm seeing something else. Okay, slideshow, I need to start it. There we go. We will start this from the beginning. Now, can you see it? Raise your hand. Okay, thank you. So, uh, Randy Majors is among uh, several people who have given much help, uh, genuine heartfelt help to genealogists. And I'm gonna feature these people just briefly before I go to Randy's materials. I wanna just remind you again of uh, Stephen Morse's site. Uh, that you've put in your favorites before using it for censuses and immigration and all the other great stuff he's put up for free before. And hopefully you're using those things. Steve's site is just very utilitarian again, very plain, but boy, does he offer us wonderful things. He's a man who made a fortune early on and said he wanted to help others. And I'm featuring some of these today. The second one there is the Digital Newberry Organization, the Newberry Library's Atlas of Historical County Boundaries Project. It's free, it's very nice. It actually did its work probably in the first place off of the work of uh, Bill Dollarhide's book on uh, census counties. Remember, we've been growing to this position over the last 28 years to get to where we are to today where we're gonna look at Randy's work. Uh, and www.cindy's list, of course, her gigantic list of free genealogy helps and sites. And if you don't use that, if you're not out looking, you're missing the very best. I know people think they can go out there anytime, but get out there and take a look. You're going to find what you want, and she's going to point you to it. And of course, the one thing I'm going to show you today is a largely free site by Randy Majors, Org. They're geography tools and they are context about Google Maps. And I don't know about you, but when I started with Google Maps, the first thing I had to do was I had to go in and load Google Maps and begin the strenuous process of figuring out what was going on with them. And that was really hard for me. And it also took up an awful lot of my memory personally, plus the memory of my computer. Well, Randy Majors org is available to us today and it incorporates all the public avail publicly available map data in Google map based tools. The neat thing is you don't have to download anything. You get to use the tools right at Randy's site. I would advise that you go out and subscribe to receive his notification of tool updates. He only does them about once every six or eight weeks, so you're not going to get them very often. But he'll tell you when he's got another tool available for you. Most of the site is free, but be aware, if you choose an advanced feature, he'll tell you that there is a fee for that particular fee, for that particular thing. 
Well, who needs a map with county lines? I did, and we can't always find those maps when we want them. As genealogists, we need to know current county boundaries, and the county seat for the county we want. We need to know the parent counties for that county in order we so that we can find records such as birth, marriage, death, uh, land records, probate records, and so on, because they're all recorded in that county of record within the appropriate time frame. Uh, I want to tell you, I mean, he says that home buyers need this, realtors need it, businesses do, disaster relief people do. Uh, he has 11,000 users a day on average at this site. So I did not want to try to take you out to it uh, in its live format. We need to do that individually by ourselves. I was looking for a ready-made township map when I found Randy Major's site uh, quite some time ago. Uh, I had looked at it. I was aware that it was award-winning site uh, and that he had made uh, things available to genealogists uh, and historians in addition to the businesses that he has worked with. Randy's background uh, out of a Colorado college is a degree in geography and GIS and business. And he's made it big in that world. And today he chooses to do the same thing that Steve Morse does while he continues to work. I'm going to go back out and make it try to advance again because I should be on client. Can you see this? Does it say who needs a map? Nope, you're not seeing that. No, but they can raise their hands. I've got a, a, a hand raiser. Can you see that one? Or are you just still at that? What do I do? Okay, I'm going to stop share. I'm going to go try the share screen again. Oh, look at this. This is miserable. Hmm. I'm going out again to stop the share and go back. To here, I'm going to the slideshow. From the beginning. Uh, let's see if it gives you the second slide. No. Does that give you the second slide? Okay, I'm going to go to the third slide and to the fourth slide. Yeah. And to the, but can they see it? Yeah. We're seeing what I just did. Okay, so we're seeing it. Excellent. Okay. So so I was looking for a ready-made township map when I found his site. I wanted a homesteader map. And it was very difficult to find for this little community because it wasn't in traditional homestead territory. It had lots of trees and very little ground that was easily accessible for farmers and homesteaders. But I needed to make a rough map of a particular township in Lake County, Montana, that had this little tiny unincorporated community called Ferndale, so I could begin to accurately identify who the early settlers were out at uh, GLOW Records, the government land office records. So I was using and willing to use Randy Major's site in cooperation with my use of GLOWRecords.blm.org. Gov. Now, my little Ferndale community is situated in a dense forest with few meadows and readily available cleared land. It was settled late in the homestead era because many people out there who were, um, oh, they were pioneers of a certain type, actually just wanting to live out in the backcountry, they just squatted on land, built a cabin, 
and eventually planned to make it official if they wanted to, but many of them even moved on. There's a problem with this in some ways even in that this unincorporated rural area was situated across two counties uh, and more than two townships. Uh, Ferndale is isolated because many of the sections for it and its surroundings are part of the Mission Mountain Range. So I had some problems ahead of me. So my needs and wants were that I needed a map that could be overlaid across two counties, across Flathead County and Lake County. And really I discovered I needed something that could be overlaid across Missoula County too, because Missoula County was that first county in about 1860 to 1864 that was the mothership of these other counties. I needed a map that recognized when Missoula County calved Flathead County, which was 1893, so they split apart then. And in 1923, both of those counties, Missoula County and Flathead County, split apart and calved this place called Lake County. I needed that map because I needed to be reminded of this location within a dense forest. So first I made a timeline so I could find the records I needed across these three counties. That timeline consisted of Missoula being uh, acknowledged out of Washington and Idaho counties in 1860, by 1864 as a uh, Montana territory, it's there by itself as Missoula County. And then I needed to know that Flathead County started its records in 1893 and there would be records for Flathead County in both Missoula County and Flathead County prior to 1893. And then when Lake County was started or calved out of Missoula County and Flathead County in 1923, I again would have the same problem. Uh, I needed to know where those early records could be found. Now it, it's true that when a new county is made, there are contracts let by county commissioners for people to go and make copies of most of the needed records for the new county. Here's the problem that I'm gonna share with you. They can make the record, they can make the index and get the records, but guess what? The indexes that they make are not always the same as the ones that were done in the original county. You need to look at both sets of indexes to make sure of the people you have who are being buyers and sellers of those materials in that timeline. It will really help you if you are trying to find your homesteaders. I'd already used Dollar Hyde's book of census maps, and I knew I could consult the Newberry Library's Atlas of Historical County Boundaries. They had a project, but it had a problem staying up a lot of the time, and candidly, they were static maps. They didn't move. You couldn't put things in on top of them or whatever. And along comes Randy Majors, who has time on his hands in the evening and makes tools to automate this historical county boundaries atlas and a whole bunch of other things. My comment, hot dog. Whoops, I'm using the wrong thing. So I'll just show you that if you go out to his site, you can get video walkthroughs. They're, they're fast. They don't take very long to, to look at. You're not looking at anything for an hour. He'll do a video walkthrough for you. They're out at uh, out on online, but you can walk right into them. And I do right through his site because he has automatic link-ups. So here's his historical U.S. counties auto checker built on static maps, but he's added, activated them so you can see how and when a county chronology changed across the years. You can check for the current stuff for today. You can show U.S. townships. You can get the historical feature labels. Just check off what you want down in the left-hand bottom corner, and it adds it into your map, and then you can print what you want. I think this is very cool and very helpful. In fact, the auto checker feature is gorgeous. If you're using a search form out at ancestry.com, 
or family search, you'll get to use this, but only if you have gone to his site and activated it in the first place. It's not something that is going to be shown there. I will tell you the monthly contributor version goes a little further. I haven't found the need yet to do it because I wasn't interested in the ancestry.com family trees. And uh, with the Bruce Busby program, Roots Magic version six, seven, eight, and nine, also check those US counties and suggest corrections. Uh, I'm just saying that he's not gonna give you the background on it, but he'll tell you what's correct. So there's ways to go about this, but Randy's feature on auto checker is gorgeous. Got to go out and sign up for it at his site. If you use the ancestry or family search organization, uh, it will automatically check that the county existed. It checks for valid places. It warns you about boundary changes. And it's really going to help you to say, no, you really can't say that the United States started in a certain year. He's, he's going to automatically correct you just like Bruce Busby does. You have to install it. Some of his tools include the research tools, go out to his top page and use his drop down menus. They are superb. He has a listing of every township and range in the United States Public Land Survey System with helpful instructions for use. He also has things for other types of listings. Current location tools, drop down menus again. He has an elevation tool and these things like Elevation tools, time zones, climate information, uh, context applications, they're really neat because you can put them right on your phone. I could be in Washington, D.C. And say, and say, if I have it loaded, where am I exactly? And what does the map look like around me? Uh, this is really an advantage for you. And remember, you're not paying for this. It's very cool. Well, how could I view an interactive map of county lines or county boundaries? His boundary lines map tool shows county lines on Google Maps. They show city limits. They'll show the latest and the best of the section township range if there's been any change. They'll show zip codes, elevations. And in order to find a county by address, you just type in the name. Which, what county do you want in a search feature? I'll show you that later. Oh, by the way, he doesn't just do the United States. He has other countries that we'll get to in a little while. And he hints always what level of political boundary or feature you need. So you don't need to know that uh, Mexican maps are going to show municipalities, not counties. You don't need to know that when you're looking at the Switzerland maps, they use a thing called districts. So does Canada for part of its search. He, in fact, gives you some advanced knowledge so you know what to look for in those countries. It can really help you. He has historical U.S. counties from U.S. beginnings because he notes that county boundaries have been changed over 17,600 times since America was settled in colonial times. He features all of these as needed for you. And he built that using the complete data set of the Newberry Library Atlas of Historical County Boundaries, which also, by the way, still mirrors the work of Bill Dollarhide's census book. So that can be useful too. In fact, I love using Bill's book just to copy, to say that I'm into and looking at a new state like Oklahoma and I'm not aware of where it was from the time it was Indian Territory. I could just copy off about nine maps at his site and have them available in front of me to help me with my decision-making. So I'll tell you, he's very good with his quick tips. He's going to be very, very thorough with you. He's going to tell you when you get to it and you say, I want to do a county line map. He'll tell you, well, there's four ways to get started using this county line map tool. And he just says, go to my search area place above the map, type an address, choose the one you want from the autocomplete list. He has them all. It's amazing. Click the map to see the county name. You can search on GPS coordinates too by just using the latitude longitude box in the right uh, top right above the map, and he takes you into uh, county 
maps in a way that is positively amazing. First of all, it gives you the map you want at the right time. Requires no download, no installations of Google or something like that. We used to have to download certain tools, but it's going to show that. You, you don't have to go to glowrecords.blm.gov to see the section township range. He's got it for you. And you can even use it on a smartphone or a tablet. It's very, very fast. Uh, just a couple of seconds to bring things up. He has county borders with county name labels, townships, city overlays. You got to try this stuff because this is really advanced material, uh, but it puts things you need right at your fingertips. For instance, uh, we've been working with homesteads recently, and how can section or township and range help me as a genealogist? Well, first of all, it gets you to the homestead records. I've already told you three times in this presentation where that is at Glow Records, but it also gets you uh, to some information that can be helpful with military land grants, at least indirectly. More on that in another presentation, perhaps. You can find an ancestor's land based on the BLM Glow Records and zero in on each homesteader in each section. Down at the bottom, instead of ever recording a name uh, in Glow Records, you can just put in the actual section, township, and range wanted, and it will bring up a map or a series of maps, I should say, with the homesteaders that are actually in that section. That's pretty cool. That's how I could get some names. I'll show you later on. It helps you determine a location based on legal land descriptions or to find a parcel of land. When you're looking at something that a county has given you and they say, yep, that's your county, that's your document for your land, and you're puzzled, well, you could go right to this site, put in the land descriptors they give you, and punch it up. You can find the county of a given township and range over historical periods of time, because that might change. The township and the range won't change, but by golly, the county can. So you can determine even the quarter quarter sections of a given spot on a map. And when you're conducting research, it's very, very good information. It's pretty much infallible information for you. Could I create a custom map for free? Uh, yeah, his map builder forms that he's got for each one of these custom maps will do it for you. Uh, you can do it by zip code or three digit or US counties or whatever, because he's embedded all those Google features and those Google helps inside of his programs. And that's what he offers to us. So you just have to check up off what option you want. So my goal early on, is to identify the early settlers of Township 26 North, Range 19 West, uh, in the Lake County site of Ferndale. There's a 26 North, or a 27 North, R19 West for the Flathead side, and I've also done that. I knew my families were late settlers, so I didn't expect to see them in the homestead, but I wanted to see the first owner so I could find those land records. So I'd pay special attention there. Then I got so I wanted to identify all the early settlers in Ferndale. After all, how many could there be? Well, there were a lot. I made a timeline of settlers I found in newspapers. I timelined the three counties, Missoula and Flathead and Lake, so I'd know where to go within those newspapers because there would be news about them as they advertised that they were they were finally settling on their homestead. So I used that. That still wasn't perfect. I used glowrecords.blmgov to identify the homesteaders and showed you how I could find them. Uh, Ferndale is unique and these these particular townships are unique because they were first part of the forest reserve and much of the land today is part of the US Forest Service lands. So I also had to identify lease ease as late as the 1970s and just plain squatters who squatted on the land. So I found the Lake County land records online at familysearch.org. 
they're all the all of the indexes are on line so I could use those grantor grantee indexes we talked about a few weeks ago to identify the land transfers but first I used Randy's tools to find the county and the townships I needed. So Ferndale's unincorporated still. It's still very rural. It's situated across two counties. Here's some things that I always knew as a little kid, but this makes things difficult. First of all, a river runs through it, the Swan River. It roughly defines the northern boundary of Ferndale in looping meanders over on the Flathead side. But on the Lake County side, it's defined by mountains. Remember, I said it had to be investigated in three counties, Missoula, Flathead, and Lake, because people started coming in and into this country in 1858, believe it or not. State of Montana and the U.S. government own many, many acres across the townships, so I also have to identify what they own, because that's where I'm going to find the people who lease land and squatters. And the Mission Mountains cut right through on the uh, Lake County side and roads are very few. This produces some real problems for this entire area because law enforcement and emergency responders respond first from the Flathead County side because that's where the roads are folks. To get to the Lake County side, you have to go through the Flathead County side, unless you're taking some first, well, first they were logging roads up through the Woods Bay side. And today they're pretty much single lane and a half to two lane roads and they're quite twisty. No more need be said. Uh, by the way, not long ago, about two months ago, there was a murder there on Crane Mountain. Uh, and several others were wounded, and the law enforcement and emergency responders were indeed from Flathead County. Not Lake was able to come within an hour or two. Next, I reminded myself of how townships are arranged in the U.S. Again, that it's 36 square miles. Each section is one mile square, about 640 acres. I think I'm okay, but it said it was changing a speaker. Sections are arranged from right to left, initially starting in the northeast corner, counting westward. And it's, I would call it oxen plow for the type of handwriting that is taught or has been taught in countries overseas. Then the then the particular area drops down one section, reverses direction, and it continues till you get through section 36. By the way, just as an aside, don't expect to use this same township arrangement if you're looking in Canada, because it's the opposite. Can't move it. Was just I'm having trouble moving this suddenly. I should be right here. I want to move that. Turn out. Thank you. Cheryl has been so helpful. So First of all, I went out to Randy's tools and I identified Lake County, Montana, because I could do that just by putting in Lake County, Montana at its search engine. And it brought this section township range map up that showed all of the townships available in Lake County, Montana. Notice that right at the top uh, of Flathead Lake and to the right is the township that I want. It's one of the, the last, it's township 26. Uh, in this particular arrangement. So first I found that. Well, that was nice to see, but it didn't get me close enough to what I wanted. Then I honed in closer to find Ferndale's general area. And I discovered that I then that the township I needed was labeled 26N, range 19 West. So I could look at that Lake County site of Ferndale. Uh, the early time 
uh, early folks that were in Ferndale, by the way, were actually clustered up by the base of Swan Lake. So I'd probably need a uh, part of the next township there too. Well, I got in still closer. It let me get closer. And now Randy's map outlines the map, the section that I need in yellow, if you can see it there. Uh, that's the Ferndale side of, or the Lake County side of Ferndale. And directly above that will be the Flathead side. Note that the sections are arranged in uh, a line of six. Uh, so I finally had the map so that I keep things in mind. But what I wanted really was, I wanted one that was numbered. So it was easy for me to keep these people in mind. So next I went to a working map. It let me go one step further and I could get the actual numbers of the sections within Ferndale in this township 26 range 19 West so that I could begin to plunk people in or their names in at least uh, and figure out who was who, uh, as I worked with those original homesteaders. In order to do that, in fact, I used one more tool that I found quite handy, and that is a, an Excel spreadsheet. I just made an Excel spreadsheet that mimicked uh, the 36 sections and began putting in names as I found them out at Glow Records. It was pretty easy because I could find an entire section then, the people who had settled in that area within the Glow Record uh, thing that I talked about earlier. I did this also for the Flathead side. And I recognized that a rough draft would be, like this would suffice because it would at least tell me early on who had to be friends with one another. You know, those neighbors and people who help uh, when you're out there homesteading by yourself. I could also see that occasionally Montana and the United States of America had reserved some of that land. And that cued me to where some of those squatters and leasers or the people who leased land could be found. They would be harder to find, I warn you. Uh, they aren't listed anywhere. You have to find them in ads. Luckily, we have newspapers today. So once I'd identified someone like Michael Kearney or Carney, I found the original homesteaders using both Glow Records and Randy's site. And I could put into my notes about Ferndale that Mike and Pat Kearney were some of the first homesteaders. Their importance is noted within the features of, of the Township 26 because Township 26 has this thing called Kearney Meadows, Kearney Creek, Kearney Rapids, Kearney Rapids Bridge, uh, showing their importance and the things that had been attached and actually things that they'd helped to build in early times in Ferndale. It also out at Glow Records showed me the township and range and uh, the sections where these things could be found. And then it gave me a very rough scale map of Kearney Creek spelled C-A-R-N-E-Y Creek down on this road, this Crane Mountain Road, which is shown on all land maps today. So this helped me in terms of being able to make a tiny map for each one of these homesteaders. I know, I need to get a life. So how am I using this made by me map of Township 26N, Range 19 West? Well, I really have gained a better, deeper understanding of the river that runs through it and how it uh, actually makes a natural boundary of Northern Ferndale, because remember this is unincorporated. So there's no real geographic boundaries. It's what it is. I found out that a lake goes across three townships and it was very important because that river and that lake were extensively used early on. That was the mode of transportation until about 1908, 1909. I learned that the Mission Mountains isolate Ferndale even today and about six other sections of Township 26 North. So if you're living there today, you're still really truly uh, very isolated, uh, I don't know, do people buy that land because of the isolation aspects? But uh, I made a similar map of Township 27 North, Range 19 West, the Flathead County side of unincorporated Ferndale, and a similar Excel spreadsheet 
uh, and found out that that side had more cleared land early on. And so there were more likely to be early homesteaders there because it was a lot easier. Yes, there were some trees to cut, but not nearly as many. I am researching each settler through their time that they lived in Ferndale and at least their first move elsewhere and making a small biography because there is no history of this place uh, for those early people. And I'm also researching the base of Swan Lake owners of huge summer homes that began there in 1905 to 1907. They were some of the first settlers. They traveled by stagecoach and railroad, well, railroad first out of Butte to Missoula, uh, up to uh, a certain part of the Mission Valley. Then they traveled by stagecoach to Pulse, and then they traveled by water, a big boat, uh, down Flathead Lake to Big Fork. Then they traveled by buckboard again and wagon to be able to get to their camp. Once they got there, well, they had gasoline motor uh, boats and they could all communicate with each other across the lake. And they did. It became quite a center of huge summer homes uh, for the rich early on. The other thing it did, by the way, is it let kids like me in Ferndale be able to have our first jobs as we worked on those estates. Uh, and we learned some very valuable things about how the other half lived. Well, there's other Randy Majors apps and stuff out at this site. You can make your custom area maps. I advise signing up for Randy's blog. It doesn't come out very often, but it'll tell you quickly about his latest hacks. He, he speaks in few words, folks, but he'll deliver it to your email. If you like maps, you want to see what Randy's doing. He's going to give you great information about many kinds of maps. Remember, again, my caveat that most of them are free, but he does have some pro tools for monthly contributors. I haven't found a thing I've needed the pro tools for uh, yet. So, uh, geez, this is one site I haven't subscribed to other than as a freebie. Let me tell you about his U.S. territories and so on that he's got. He covers all of the counties in all 50 states or their other names. Remember, Alabama has a diff different way of covering their counties or their names, and uh, so does Alaska. He covers Puerto Rico, U.S. Virgin Islands, Guam, Northern Mariana Islands, and American Samoa. Uh, he allows you to draw city limits when you're looking at incorporated cities and towns. Why would you want to do that? Because early on, some of these places incorporated, and as a result, they treated their records differently. If you go into Virginia, you're going to find some places in Virginia that don't have records at the county level at all. They are at the city level. He shows U.S. townships and draws all the minor civil divisions, the townships, just like I showed you, and he gets you right down to what you need. But now let's walk across the Atlantic. Within the United Kingdom, he displays the counties and unitary authorities for England. In Scotland, he displays the council areas. In Wales, he displays the principal areas. And in Northern Ireland, he displays the districts. And he gives you explanations for those as to why you want those particular levels. In Australia, he shows you the LGAs, the local government areas, and takes you right down beyond them. In New Zealand, he displays the territorial authorities because that's what you need to go to. In Canada, we already know from our library here that we have to look at census divisions and we have to look at districts sometimes because Canada shows both of them as legitimate ways to get down to those, those pieces of information you need. Mexico displays municipalities because uh, they're the next level administrative division below the states. And Switzerland displays all the way down through districts. So oh, Randy hints are available through all of this and he does a great job of explaining uh, with frequently asked questions, which he's anticipated, special hints for genealogists, special hints for GIS researchers, and he anticipates those questions, breaks down his answers, so look for his help button. By the way, I love the fact that he matter of fact, they recognize that some of us are doofuses with regard to printing the, his stuff. So he shows you how to do it in various ways. And he even shows you how to take screenshots because he knows you're gonna do it. 
he'll give you this information uh, in a uh, frequently asked question and get you right down to what you have to do to click the print button and use a Windows logo key shift key plus shift plus S to take a screenshot. You might not be familiar with that. And then you just have to click off again, click done printing and go right on out. He does things like zip code mapping for you. Uh, say you're in Chicago or you're in Washington DC or you're in New York or Denver and you're not sure quite where you are. He'll, your phone, uh, you can just query right on there which zip, zip code area you're in and bingo, you'll find that. Uh, I needed zip codes in Cascade County recently and I just went to custom maps, specified the place, specified what I wanted in the bottom left boxes. I clicked show labels, show zip code boundaries and presto, I had all of them. Or if you wanna know what area code you're in, he'll let you know. A phone area code, he'll let you know what that is. Uh, I have not tried this on the overseas thing, so I don't know about that. Today, we're just working with the United States anyway. Time zones, well, I wish I would have had this feature when I showed up way early for a breakfast date with my Saskatchewan cousins, because I was an hour early. I forgot about their changes of time. He's made these maps and these apps work with all of these other countries that he has listed. So it's really tailor made for us. There are individual city maps you can make. And I've just shown some examples here. I took our smallest state, Rhode Island, and showed you their five counties. You can click right in once you've identified the county. He just clicks you right in, taking away all of that other messy work you would have had to do at Google Maps. And then he'll show you all the highlights and he'll show you the quick tips for that particular place. He'll show you a city map for a particular county. This is Providence, Rhode Island, and all of the main uh, cities there. All I had to do was hit the Providence County underline, and it took me to this and showed me this. I didn't go any further than that. I wonder if we can. We might be able to go down more than that. This is his welcome to randymajors.org help resources, uh, video walkthroughs for certain things and, and uh, his frequently asked questions again. And he even gets exotic, I think. He says, well, what if you know the general area, but not the county, say you're in Australia or whatever. He just walks you right through his four easy steps again using everything and says, even you can use his app. I think this is exotic uh, to find a country by radius or by drawing a line or a shape and then saying, what's the county that this is within? I, it's amazing. I don't know if this works with his foreign country maps. I assume it has because I bet the GIS researchers love this particular site, especially those who are in training to be geographers and GIS workers in all of the various places that are needed, uh, that need these workers every day. Remember, every county in the United States probably has a GIS department. You can do things uh, and get a preliminary view of a section township or range. I just typed in on this one, the Sun River and got the address that I noted. I said Sun River, so it said, okay, this is approximately where it is within the particular space and gave me at least a fair idea of it. Well, who is Randy Majors? He is a University of Colorado at Boulder graduate in with BAs in geography, GIS and business. And he's made his life in business afterwards. He's quite well known today, but he, Look at the early things that he did. He was a US Geological Survey intern in the National Mapping Division at Lakewood. He was the co-author of a geological kiosk for Great Basin National Park early on. So he was getting some pretty good training. Uh, he's a helpful person. I advise again, that you get to this site. I advise that you use the notes, keep them so that you can go to this because he's going to even do a thing with giving you 12 important points, for example, on why you need a map with historical county boundaries. That's even more than what Bill Dollarhide did, uh, because he's gone across every kind of possible research you can think of for every possible business or governmental uh, 
political place. So that's Randy Majors. I'm going to go back and stop my screen share and go back to questions. It's 50 minutes, just like I thought it would be about. So we should be back. I'm going to let you unmute yourself if you would like to ask a question. Uh, so uh, how many people did I lose? Did you? <laughs> I hope I didn't. It says we have 26 on here right now. So anyone have questions? You can unmute yourself if you do. Randy. It, it just looks like a wonderful site, not, like you said. Not coming through on me. What do I it just looks like a wonderful site. I'm, a, I'm a really a map person, so I'm excited about it. Yeah, it's, it is an amazing site uh, and uh, works so well for people. If you're interested in doing some of these maps, honest to goodness, they have to be really easy for me to use. And Lee Walker is there also. Uh, Jan, could you explain how it interfaces with Family Search and Ancestry a little more? Okay, the very first thing you need to do if you want to interface, as I understand it, because I don't use that particular thing. I've got a thing where I don't use the things in Ancestry. Uh, and I, I use Family Search for Cousin Bait, so that's kind of different for me. But you need to go out to Randy's site first and find that. It's under Ancestor Search. Go out there and hook into that. And then my understanding is that once you go out there and you're using it, it comes to you. He has a deal with Ancestry and it comes to you uh, if you're attached in there. You have to have a subscription or be in a library where you can use a yeah. subscription okay. to be able to do that. Uh, family Search, the same thing, uh, I would assume. But again, uh, I can tell you about it. I haven't done it because I use Ancestry strictly to research records. I do not use the uh, any of the family trees. And as I understand it, that's this is where it can be quite helpful is with the family trees. 